into the crease now. It's a debutant in his home ground is Newlands. Newlands faithful will be behind him, there's no doubt. But Graham Smith will remember this day for a long, long time to come. Nicely played, that'll bring the 100. Made and test 100 for Graham Smith. So remember it for a long time. Well played. That's the 200. That's a big number. He loves it. Oh, it's ripped into the gloves. Off a length. That really has hurt Graham Smith. I think that could well be broken. Graham Smith goes to his 23rd hundred, his second against Australia. One to win now. South Africa take the honours in what has been quite an extraordinary test match. Yes, he gets there. A back cut from Graham Smith. A hundred for the South African captain in his 100th test match. He is a mighty fine player. And there it is. South Africa have won. They've won this match. They've won the series. And they go to the top of the world rankings. And there's... South African skipper's 26th test 100. Edge and take it. Graham Smith again. There it is. South Africa. They've came to, come to Australia and they've conquered Australia. Iconic effort from Graham Smith, the captain of the team. So it's masterclass time with Graham Smith. Graham, just looking at that, I mean, that's got to bring you floods of memories coming back. Yeah, Hazy, I mean, uh, wonderful to look back on some uh, really good moments. Um, it's always nice to see the highlights packages, uh, <laughs> but uh, there were some tough moments, certainly on in the, in the early parts of the captaincy. But um, I think, you know, opening the batting and captaining was challenging, but to, to have got through 11, 12 years of that and, and had some success as a team and as an individual is, is hugely rewarding. OK, so we're going to delve in and, and find out exactly how you did it your way, which was a unique style, we know that, but did it so successfully. But before we get right into it, how would you describe yourself as a player? I, I think that's an important thing you touch on, Hazy. I think it's important to, to stick to your own strengths and weaknesses and try and understand that quite early on as a player. Um, I was never the most elegant player. The things I uh, had as strengths were determination, concentration, a will to score runs, a will to be successful. And I was prepared to work hard for it. You know? and, then, and then I was quite a big burly guy, so I had some body language uh, and I needed to use that out in the middle. But surely with the success you did have, and particularly when you first took over the reins of South Africa, was there ever a tendency or a thought in your mind that you can actually go outside your bubble and, and play a different style? You said you perhaps weren't the most attractive player. Was there a temptation to try and go that way and, and be more of a fluent sort of player? I, I think for me it wasn't really a thought process. I was, I, for me, cricket was about being effective, you know, uh, scoring runs. Um, you know, how I looked at the end of the day wasn't really uh, something that I, I needed to, to feel for myself. I, I generally got a lot of my strength and determination from within myself, not really what, what other people got to say about me. So my drive came within myself. Uh, I was prepared to train hard and, and prepared to earn that. And, and for me, I, w I wanted to be effective. I was an opening batter. I needed to, it was a tough role and I needed to get the job done and be effective doing it. Now, what about people you watch closely? I mean, I think all cricketers, successful cricketers, identified a couple of guys that, the, that they watched and, and tried to pick up things from. Who were the guys that you focused on even before you started playing first class? I, I never really had one individual person that I sort of idolised. Um, I think when I was growing up, we got readmitted back into international sports and I clearly remember the World Cup and Kepler captain and the guys there in Australia. That was sort of opened my eyes to this dream that there was a possibility. Um, but I think if, of players that maybe through those years when I was growing up, you know, from a leadership perspective, probably Hansi and, and Steve Waugh were sort of, the, sort of seen as the top leaders at that time. You know, Gary Kirsten was a player that I think was pretty similar to the way that I played the game. You know, um, maybe not as, as attractive, but, but made the most of his ability. Um, so, I, yeah, I think Gary probably in the end, and then getting to play with him was uh, really a dream come true. What about Steve Waugh? What in particular did you like about Steve Waugh? 
What I liked about Steve Wall was uh, also that he wasn't the most attractive player. He was, a, he was a determined player. He was a tough character. I think from a leadership perspective, you know, he was he was hard nosed and and got the best out of it. I, I remember reading one or two of his captain's diaries as a, as a young guy, and certainly some of his thought processes and the way he looked at the game resonated with the way that I did. Okay, all right, and and, and I mean, obviously, we, we, his reputation of being tough, and, and, and clearly that's something you, you picked up, and and, and being so, very successful, and, and and doing a job for his country, which I'm sure is something else that that you admired about him. Gary Kirsten, what about Gaz? Well, I think for Gary, it was also that maybe not the most talented and gifted player, but made the most of his ability. And I think the thing that stood out for, for me with Gary was one, his determination, um, his character. He was a good team man. But also that he had certain strengths and he played within within that. You know, Gary was a different style player. He had probably more offside strengths than me, but he stuck to what they were. Um, and then I think something that resonated with me when I moved to Western Province as an 18-year-old, I got to meet him when he was playing for South Africa, and he just said, learn your strengths and weaknesses early on, especially as an opening batter. Understand what they are, and that will help you um, to be successful at the next level. Uh, and what a dream for you as you went along to obviously have him alongside you for a lot of your career. Yeah, I know, absolutely. We, 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 uh, the double hundred at Lords that I got at, at 22, Gary got a hundred also, and right. we batted for a long period of time, and that's a memory that stands out for me. They're getting a hundred uh, in New Zealand in his last test match. I can remember the, the emotions and batting with him to win that test match. There's so many, you know, and also I think as a person, Gary was just a wonderful man, you right. know, and, and then he coached us down the line and yep. just a, as, a, as a personality, it was just great uh, influence on me. And when we do some research or look at, uh, at your career and we, we focus on people who helped you as a youngster coming through, Jimmy Cook, the name Jimmy Cook, uh, who was a, and we all know, was a wonderful cricketer and a terrific coach, by the way, his name comes out loud and clear in your development. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you look back as a youngster, when you're kind of growing out through the ranks and, you know, people start talking that maybe this guy's got some potential and, you know, you never really know. And I was fortunate that I always managed to maintain a, a success throughout the sort of the young age groups. Um, but Jimmy was a huge influence on my technique, uh, sort of teaching me as an opening batter, you know, the, the do's and don'ts, where to leave the ball, where to square cut, never get caught at 45 degrees, for example. You know, being able to drop and run and then also, I mean, just spending hours working with me and, and getting me to understand and, 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 and really work on my game. The other influence is obviously my parents I and mean, that support yep. base that you get sure. from someone in your life. You know, for me, it was my parents that were able to... You know, we didn't have a lot of money, but they invested a lot of time into me. You know, they were always taking me to the places I needed to go. I was very self-driven. I always wanted to go do more, play club cricket over the weekend. My parents always made that effort for me. Um, so it's often someone like that that is prepared to put the effort that makes a difference. And then also club cricket for me was a big, big thing. Um, you know, I played with older guys at a very young age and I had to grow up and I had to develop beyond my years. I was fortunate that guys like Richard Snell was investing back into the game and right. he captained old Eds at the time. And uh, to get to play with him, uh, a former pro tier, and you know, just really at 14 or 15 to have those influences was incredible. You got a bat in your hand and a, and a sponsor you used for a long, long time. Let's talk about the strengths of your technique and your main checkpoints of the way you went about your game. Well, I think this is a very important space for a batsman. This is sort of uh, area, you know, out there you generally are thinking about, you know, sort of uh, letting your thoughts go a little bit, considering you know, the next ball. But once you lock into the space, it's generally for me was just about watching that ball as hard as I can. Um, I, I wasn't a, a, a very technical type player. You get guys that are very worried about where their hands are. There were just a couple of things that were important for me. It was about a feel. Um, and obviously for me as a left-hander, balance was being a big guy. Balance was my, my key thing. So in my stance, generally early on in my innings, I used to wiggle my toes a lot just to try and make sure that I never fell over into into a channel then LBW for me was probably early on in the innings was a big dismissal so I really was conscious of that keeping my head straight and almost allowing my head to access towards the ball not to go towards backward points so those were the first things the other thing is I found I got out of LBW a lot when my hands got away from my body um, I had a, a different type of grip yes. that a lot of people spoke about I didn't have the natural open face grip that you see a lot of players have I had a slightly closed top hand and my thought process was always hit the ball where it's coming from. You know, try and hit the ball back at the bowler. I felt that that's, especially in long version of the game, that's where I was going to be safest. If I could be strong on off stump and try and hit the ball back at the bowler and access that straight. And if he got short, then play my cuts and my pull. And who were the bowlers that you thought you had to work harder than most against? <laughs> there, there were a couple. I mean, you play for 11 years, every series there's someone that bowls really well. Um, 
you know, if I think uh, probably someone like Zaire Khan, a left-hander yep. with great skill, stands out for me and often did me for lack of pace. You know, I think he had a really big jump and I really struggled to sort of set my position and got caught a lot but in, a, 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 in bad positions. Someone like Matthew Hoggard for me uh, at times uh, when I went through one or two technical challenges. But every series you found that there was someone you needed to overcome. And as I went on in my series, in, in, in my career, I started to really train a lot smarter, think better about the game. And then when I got into the middle, you know, I was able to access that. Lovely shot of that uh, nice little straight drive at the end there. How were you different from others? I mean, where, where did you think you, you really stood out compared to other cricketers in the game? Because your style was a bit unique. And successfully, very successfully unique. Yeah, it was. I mean, as I say, as yeah, I mean, I, it's very difficult to compare yourself to other players. You know, for me, it was about making the most of my ability. And as I say, being effective. I was an opening batter for my team. And I, wanted to, I was hungry to perform. I also captaining for 10, 11 years. I was always asking a lot of my, my players in terms of performance. I also needed to step up. You know, for me, it was about body language. It was about being effective um, and, and, and a real hunger for runs. And also, I, I like to, to sort of, once I was in, obviously the first hour, you've got to work really hard for your runs. But once I was in, for me, it was a battle between me and the bowler. You know, I, I wanted to put him under pressure. I know he was trying to get me out and put me under pressure. But I always felt that, like, you know, what can I work with? I'm a big guy, I've got body language. You know, make sure that they know I'm here. And try and be as opposing as you possibly try could and be in this as, little space. As opposing, if he gives me a bad ball, it's gone. I'm in the game, I'm running hard, I'm calling loud that they know Graham Smith is here and I mean business. And if that gained me an inch here and there, then, 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 then good. But uh, for me, it was about sticking to, to my game plans, making sure they bowled full at me, try and force them to bowl straight square cut early on and and the, the covers for me was a region that i only really wanted to access if it was a full toss a long half volley or i was in on 60 or 70. and just briefly a, a real baptism of fire for you right here at this particular ground against australia yeah i mean uh, i saw a, a clip of that now I, mean, mm -hmm. I remember walking out of that first innings uh, i don't even i don't even think i could breathe at that stage i was so nervous so luckily <laughs> i had form coming into that but i'll never never forget i mean gillespie brett lee uh, Glenn McGrath, Shane Warne, I mean, the, the, the great uh, Australian bowling attack to make your debut against. And I remember second innings, I walked out and I got a, a hell of a reception from the boys. And Haydos <laughs> has become a good mate. He, he, really, he really taught me a lesson or two. And I managed to guts out a few overs against Shane Warne and managed to get 60. And that sort of kick-started my career. And, and you start to feel, even though you're facing the same kookaburra, incredible bowlers, and it just gives you a little bit of confidence, helps you settle in the environment. And I was a guy, I mean, it often talks about change rooms, about... No, that, that guy never made me feel welcome. I, I used to put myself, I used to ask the senior players where they're going for dinner. And even though I didn't go and say much, I used to go and sit at their table and just listen and, and be around, you know, just take it all in. So I was a guy that was prepared to put myself in those positions. What about a particular knock that you can remember that you, you, you're very proud of? I think the one throughout my career, obviously there was, there was a couple, but uh, Edge Baston, um, I think in 2008. Right, the uh, 150. Against, against England, uh, um, we were one all up in the series. That was the second last test match and uh, we had England on the ropes and then they fought back. And I remember that morning just being in a, you know, the pressure of captaining that whole tour. I was feeling in a bad place. I actually didn't even make breakfast that morning. And uh, luckily that morning we bowled in the night. We needed 270 to win the game. And you always know if you don't do it then, going to the oval in the last test is going to be tough. And uh, my first 20 balls, I don't even think I saw. I nicked a lot through the slips, came in at lunch, and then walked out after lunch, and Jimmy Anderson dragged one down, and I saw it, and I pulled it for four through mid-wicket, and it was almost like I just settled down, and I got into my zone. Uh, and, and I think for me, there was so much happening. Jock and the guys were, were yep. ducking full tosses of flint off. The crowd was going mad. And I just managed to stay in my space, and Bouch and I put on, I think, 100 to win the series. First ever series won in England, which was, you know, a wonderful feeling. And what about uh, a double hundred against Pakistan? I mean, that was that was in Dubai. That wasn't that wasn't an easy situation for you. No, it wasn't. I mean, I'd just come back from a stress fracture in my ankle, also I'd trained really hard, kind of like what Dale Stain's done now. But the reason that I, I picked that double hundred out is that growing up in South Africa, you know, you grow up against fast bowling, and your whole mindset and your technique is against fast bowling. And then suddenly you come up against a Murray Lutron, or you come up against a Shane Warne. Uh, and, and, and Saeed Ajmal at that time, before they started banning deuces and stuff, you know, it was, an, it was a nightmare. Um, so to be able to adapt and change the way I thought about spin bowling, you know, it, it, in, 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 in the early days, you know, I think Jacques Callas actually influenced something against me. He, he taught me to think about letting the ball spin into the face of the bat from a defensive perspective. You see a lot of guys, especially in England now, they're always defending against off spin with half a bat. 
and uh, he really made me think about making the ball turn into the bat and almost defending into the spin and that's sort of um, developed my mindset. Yes, I was a leg side uh, player, but I used to generally try and get onto off stump, get into the channel of the off spinner, make him think about where he's going to bowl, and then defend into the spin, and then the odd occasion use my feet to try and give myself a scoring opportunity. And I, and I can't let you go without talking about that broken hand situation in Australia. I mean, that, that's that's one area, that one incident I think that everyone remembers, and, and how courageous that was, and how much determination it took. Yeah, uh, uh, unbelievable. I mean, I, I, I didn't realise at the time how it would influence people. I mean, even today I get asked a, a million questions about that occasion. Um, but uh, I didn't wake up that morning, that morning expecting to bat, and uh, yeah, Mitchell broke a few of my fingers over the years. Yes. But, uh, it was my knuckle, right through my knuckle on my left hand. I was flying home that, uh, the next morning. Uh, we were 2 up in the series and uh, I didn't even have whites at the ground. I had my cricket kit in my bag. Um, so I had to go digging eventually when it came to that point. I remember looking over at Mackay and Tini. He looked the loneliest man in the world, last man in. And eventually it got to a point where I started thinking, should I, shouldn't I? Uh, I think the boys helped me pad up. Neil Mack you know, putting in my box, tying my pants. <laughs> I stole some clothes off uh, Paul Harris well, and he had had a good lunch. Man. It was a big burger stain over man. his top. <laughs> so I took Jacques Callis's jersey and next minute I walked to the yeah, back of the old SCG really change room and there was Callis sitting and he, and he said to me, chicks dig scars and glory lasts forever. So I thought I better get away from him. <laughs> and I walked out and I just sort of gathered my thoughts and next minute it was time to get out there and it was probably the only time in my career that Makai Antini was my senior partner with the bat. <laughs> <laughs> right, Graham, that's terrific. Lovely insight. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Andy. I'm sure that our viewers have learned quite a bit about the way you went about it. It was an outstanding career. Congratulations on that career in particular. I appreciate it. Thanks, Andy. OK, there you go. There's uh, the masterclass with Graham Smith. And I'm sure you picked up some pretty special points from someone who's done it his way and done it brilliantly. You make me feel so alive.